Those who deny freedom to others deserve it not from themselves. Abraham Lincoln said this quote in a letter to Henry L. Pierce in 1859. Lincoln was a strong advocator for slave rights, and his efforts helped fuel abolitionist movements all over the U.S. Although slavery has been outlawed for over 100 years, it continues to be a persistent problem in modern times, while simultaneously taking on a new form. Human trafficking, the illegal movement of people, typically for the purposes of forced labor or commercial sexual exploitation, is a growing problem today, especially in third world countries. This new version of slavery includes prostitution, involuntary servitude, involuntary sex acts, or the illegal movement of people. While mostly occurring in countries such as Thailand, Malaysia, and Venezuela, human trafficking is present in various waves, even in industrialized countries such as the United States of America. This $32 billion international market is becoming increasingly harder to control, and local governments are struggling to find a solution. Currently in Malaysia, police are being detained for transporting migrants through human trafficking from Myanmar and Bangladesh. Bodies of these victims of human trafficking were found in graves and evidence of torture and abuse have been found with the exhumations. Similarly in Thailand, situations like this were found and authorities are questioning whether this evidence of human trafficking can be found on both sides of the border. Out of Myanmar, people are transferred to cargo ships at sea and are then taken southeast towards Indonesia and Malaysia, two large locations of human trafficking. Recently, news teams caught up with these suspected police in Malaysia to find a different perspective. Hello, this is APWH News in Malaysia with one of the 12 suspected police of human trafficking transport crimes. Can you describe these jungle trafficking camps for us? Yes, these events that we have been suspected of are actually true. Although I am ashamed to admit it, I conducted the transportation of people to places like Thailand and Myanmar for extra money. The other officials and I on the other side of the border were involved in this. How did the scale of human trafficking go on unnoticed? We concealed the information since we had the authoritative level of being police. We used brutality forces with bamboo and tarpaulin to keep loads of people in constricted places, and they often went without proper amounts of food and water. I didn't want them to suffer. I never wanted to force people into being trafficked. I was just going along with that, with what others were doing, because I know how cutthroat of an industry this is. Mm -hmm. And what do you know about the overseas transportation of these victims? I know that there are many cargo ships crammed with hundreds of starving migrants in the waters off of Thailand. They come ashore to Indonesia and Malaysia, and we then take care of the rest. I am personally against this form of transportation, and wish that these people had more comfort, but I am not one who conducts this. That should be enough. Thank you for sharing about this topic. Over 20 million people are involved in human trafficking currently. Shockingly, 80% are women and children. Typically, men are involved in hard labor, children are used for agricultural or manufacturing purposes, and women are sold mainly for the sole purpose of either prostitution or sex acts. 80% of all human trafficking is for this purpose of sexual exploitation, and only 19% is for labor exploitation or other purposes. This has furthered the transmission of the HIV virus, and many victims aren't educated about the disease and are unable to receive help. Nonetheless, human trafficking is not to be confused for smuggling, the two crimes are very similar, but smuggling is based upon transportation, whilst trafficking is based on the act of exploitation. Many survivors of human trafficking are haunted by their experiences and aren't able to receive re rehabilitation, including immediate physical safety or other commodities like food and water. Recently, a survivor named Mami from Indonesia was forced into the system of sexual exploitation and has kept her experience quiet until now out of shame. During a press conference not long ago, she has retreated from the shadows to tell the world her story and raise awareness of the situation. I have a question from the press. Yes. 
How did you get involved with the trafficking network? I needed to support my son and my family, and I could not do so at home. So I looked to work abroad and found a job as a waitress in Malaysia. I had worked in Singapore prior to this, so I thought it would be okay. I didn't know what human trafficking was at the time or the danger that lay ahead of me. How was your experience in Malaysia? You don't realize the extreme effects of such an experience that they can have on a person. I was sold, moved around, and, if you tried to escape, threatened. I told all of my clients, most of whom didn't care, my story. One man, however, helped me. I told him I was being forced against my will, and he gave me his phone to call my family in Indonesia. It wasn't until one of my friends called their family for help, however, that we were freed. I was ashamed to talk to my family about my work for so long. I was infected with HIV and was uneducated about it. I finally reached out to a support group of educated people that could help me. What message would you like to give everyone here today regarding human trafficking? That, like me, most people don't know what human trafficking really is or that they are being trafficked. Governments must educate local men, women, and children so that they know what precautions to take and what circumstances to avoid. If you want to work abroad, go through government approved agencies and get all the necessary paperwork and details about what the work entails. Thank you, Meme. Along with the many efforts to protect victims of human trafficking, there must be laws passed to carry this out. Although, though there are still various cases of unnoticed trafficking going on currently, U.S. laws are passed in or efforts to reduce these. Through several acts, such as the Trafficking Victims Protection Reauthorization Act, or the U.S. Leadership on HIV and AIDS, Tuberculosis, and Malaria Act, anti-trafficking efforts are all assisted and improved. The Victims of Trafficking and Violence Prevention Act, or TVPA, is another one of these. TVPA combats trafficking in people, especially into the sex trade, slavery, and involuntary servitude. Some prevention acts collaborate with other countries and their foreign governments to prevent the spread of trafficking over borders rather than simply within a country. Most of these acts have a common aspect of protecting women and to reduce, reduce violence against them, such as in Title I of the TVPA. Southeast Asia continues to be a commonly no center of people smuggling and human trafficking. Minorities such as the Rohingya Muslims from Myanmar have been forced into boats by armed men where they are kept am amid dwindling supplies for weeks or months. Over 25,000 migrants have been forced out of their home countries and into the questionable and threatening hands of human traffickers in the first three months of 2015 alone. Authorities in Thailand have recently been trying to discover solutions to these migrant boats, many of which they find abandoned and neglected at sea. The U.S. Thai military are cooperating and trying to administer a navy to monitor seas to help. Other groups are attempting to fight human trafficking as well. The Polaris Project is a non-governmental organization in the U.S. that raises awareness by using survivor stories, operating a 24-7 hotline that gives access to information and services, and using data to track where the traffickers operate in order to shut these proceedings down. On their website, they provide information about this topic to educate others and list warning signs of trafficking. They also have an option to donate to this cause. The CNN Freedom Project is a news media campaign created by CNN to end modern day slavery through documentaries, shared survivor stories, and fundraising to stop trafficking and especially prevent children from being taken out of schools to be put into this global black market. Similarly, the Not For Sale campaign works to provide safety, life skills, and futures for survivors and empower them to find their footing upon freedom. All three of these campaigns and organizations accept any possible donations to help fight trafficking, not just in the U.S., but all around the world. These groups also provide survivor stories and more information on the subject to educate the masses about the horrors going on in the world around them. Although human trafficking is a rather hidden crime, 
it affects several millions of people in first and third world countries. Not only is it condemned by a violation of human rights, but a dehumanization exploitation of women, men, and children. Likewise, sex trafficking, its most common form, plays a major role in spreading the HIV virus, a terminal illness transmitted through the blood or through sexual contact. Human trafficking is a global issue that is increasingly spreading and becoming harder to monitor. And while governments are trying to propose different solutions, everyone needs to become educated and educate others on the dangers of human trafficking. By spreading awareness, we can help eradicate trafficking. To learn more or help someone in need, call the National Human Trafficking Resource Center by dialing 1-888-373-7888 or visit traffickingresourcecenter.org.